Warning, the formless style is fake. If you didn't know that, well, I don't know what to do for you. Welcome to my channel. You can call me Moz. The formless style is misunderstood. Although we know it is a very special style, there are some aspects of the martial art that we have forgotten and some stuff that we cannot attribute towards it. So, in preparation for Lutian's video, let's discuss the strengths and weaknesses of the formless style, as well as the ways Lutian's and Kano Azito's formlessness differs. A little bit of background now and then doesn't really hurt anybody. The formless style was created by the real Tokida Niko, the one with the pipe and the crazy hair. The formless style was something Tokida Niko had created after his secret techniques, the advance and fallen demon, had failed to bring about the right results. Following these two failures, Tokida Niko fully abandoned Gaomukaku's Niko style and created the formless style, a school of martial arts meant to completely overshadow the Niko style. The real Tokida Niko initiated children from the inside, much like his own master. In fact, far too similar to his master because most of them end up dying. Students who were initiated into the formal style had to survive the Gu ritual, a grueling task in which students who had most likely trained with each other and formed inseparable bonds were placed in a sealed off environment and forced to kill each other. The purpose of this ritual was to unleash the animalistic side of Niko's students, transforming them into little more than killing machines. Kano Ajito was one of these students. He was discovered by Katara Matsudo and Kuri Erio as the last survivor of a Gu ritual. After being saved, Katara Matsudo took Ajito underneath his wing and tried to rehabilitate his savage side. Although somewhat successful, Kano Ajito still reveals a terrifying grin whenever he uses the formal style. Being completely indebted to his savior, Kano Ajito fought in the Kengen matches as the 5th Fang of Mitsudo, wrecking havoc with the largest win streak in the series with 160 wins to 1 loss, most likely attributed to his training under Mitsudo and the formless style. Then, during the events of the Kengen vs Purgatory tournament, we discovered Lu Tian, another survivor of the Gu Ritual, serving as a Purgatory Gladiator. Although undercover as a warm affiliate, he fought Kano Ajito as Niko's pupil. Unlike Ajito, he was recovered by Tokida Niko and became a much more formal student of his. It was another path that Kano Ajito could have taken if he wasn't saved by Katara Mitsudo. Now, for some actual analysis. Now that we are refreshed, let's talk about the biggest attribute about the formless style. It's unpredictability. The formless style uses unconventional movements to hide the user's intent from their opponents. This enables a master of formless to become the natural enemy of foresight by utilizing surprise. This level of surprise isn't quite the same as Muteba's or Ryuki's. Their styles place more emphasis by transitioning between larger or equally deadlier techniques. Whereas, the surprise attributed to formless is more subliminal and incorporated into every little movement made by the user. Here are a few examples of Kano Ajito and Lu Tian doing this with the formless, but mostly Ajito. Hello, unscripted Maz here. Uh, for some context, this is round two, and Gaolang has basically schooled Ajito in terms of boxing, and he has adapted to his boxing in its entirety. But what I'd like to like bring your attention to is, uh, is right around here. What the fuck is this? I think your first response would be, oh, he's going limp. He's gonna, like, disperse the damage. But I, I don't think that's really the case here. Because you see, Yaoling completely missed. And like this, like he did, he basically just dodged it. This is what I, what I feel. So, I don't think he's going limp. It's just, uh, this is like an expression of like, oh yeah, he's unpredictable. He, he looks like a, this is how you express that. Like him literally breaking down his form. But you see later, it's like, it is turned that into like a silhouette. So like, if it was a little much later, just Galang would strike a silhouette. But also another point of where this is, like right here, Galang is like very good at foresight. So he's like surprised by these moves. That's why he's not landing anytime. Moving on. 
skipping round three because uh, Ajito really sealed off Formless for that round. We're moving to round four against Kano against Kuroki Gensai, I mean. Basically, at this point in the duel, Kano Ajito has gotten the advantage with his pre initiative, but Kuroki Gensai found a weakness for that in opening, and thus he switched to Formless. And uh, this is proof of that surprise element right here. Uh, the, the, the guy with the best foresight ability in the series, with his most and less, and also pre-initiative, cannot predict formless Ajito at all. Like, he's not a masochist like Sekibayashi. He has nothing to gain from getting struck like this at all. He's he's so much of a master, he's like, oh yeah, why am I taking strikes like this? Oh yeah. So, like, this shows that, like, he cannot predict Ajito when he's using formless. Now for Lucian. Now here in, uh, Kado Ajito's fight with uh, Lutian. At this point, Lutian completely uh, sought Ajito out with his own formless. So Ajito is now switching to his more orthodox style, which he used against Hatsumi. And uh, another like uh, proof for that surprise concept here is like here he's getting overwhelmed like at first, but now like sit like this. This is that coming in. Like Ajito thinks he's gonna be here, but nah, he just moved. It's unconventional, it's surprise, that sort of thing. Here he's just striking, continues to strike. Also here. This is what I mean by the silhouette stuff I was talking with Galhang. This is like how they... The expression of formless change. Also here, more more stuff, grappling. And this. Like... I think this makes a lot of sense, and we'll, and we'll get to that later. This whole like... Turn around, and then the toss. So yeah, that's another point I'll, I'll mention. I'll, I'll get to that later. The greatest aspect of the formless style lies in its immense move pool. Masters of formless have a variety of different techniques at their disposal. This aspect gives the formless style its unique flexibility, but also causes a slight delay between movements. Here are a few examples of Kano's move pool. Hi, unscripted Maz here. So Ajito shows a lot of his uh, move set during his fight against Lu Tian in King and Omega. So I'm gonna try my best to analyze what he's exactly doing. So first up, uh, Adito takes the initiative. He's the one that dashes first. Yeah, and the first thing he does is this uh, this grab. He's going for his uh, his heel right here. And then, while while si while still down here, he does a low kick right here. He's he's trying to like take away his balance. He's not giving him time to like get that Wu Wang fist form yet. And so like they continue to exchange. Tons of exchanges later. Uh, like he gets his form here, like his legs now, he's like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna strike you now. But Ajito does uh, this thing here, interestingly. Uh, this uh, sort of like trip, this foot sweep. Then he chains that with the same leg. He, go he goes back and he does a high kick while he's like on, while he's off balance right here. So that causes him to like move back. And here another interesting happens, an interesting hap thing happens. He, uh, Ajito tries to push him out of the stage with like some sort of wrestling grappling thing. But like it's... Clo like the motive behind it's like closer to like Bach Mongolian wrestling like Night On or or even like sumo wrestling to some extent but less so more more like Mongolian wrestling yeah and then the way Lutian gets out of this uh, he he does a little bit of a sidestep until like throws another like uh, he throws a right he grabs it and then uses that as another kick and so like Lutian is like completely ousted and he's like he gets he gets the countdown. And like, you know what I mean. Adito is so in like most of his moves right here, like a bunch of kicks, a, a right, a right punch, and even like some foot sweeps and some grappling as well. Now for uh, Lutian's turn, like uh, analyzing his arsenal of moves completely. So, and during this, uh, when Kano Adito fought Lutian, uh, at this point they're both unleashing their formless against each other, and like you'll see some weird panels. So first, Kano Adito does a uh, right punch. Lutian does like a left, Ajito uh, like an elbow, and here, they do some nut stuff. Looks looks crazy, right? Yep. Koga's like very confused. Mr. Fist Eye Man. He doesn't know what's need he doesn't know what's happening. So you so you know it's like some real shit. So like they keep doing this. He's about to do an elbow. And like and say there's a kick, it's like like you can't really like predict these people, man. They're, they're crazy. See again, like instead of a silhouette here, they did the they did the thing they did before in King and Osra where just like Oh yeah, they just break down their form. 
Like this dude, Atito, if he was, if he was alive, he just, he just, he just lost both his arms. It's crazy. And like here, Takito almost like, oh yeah, oh yeah, if he kept swinging, he would have still lost. Lucian would have done the elbow. It's like this keeps happening and happening and happening. So it's like back and forth, back and forth until like he starts breaking down. We're not done with Lutian just yet. Uh, so as like the fight went on, um, Ajito uh, set away his formlessness for the time being, and like he fought him with his pre-initiative instead. So like this, you've seen this before. Like this. I don't really know how you can really describe this, but like since it's like this pattern specifically, I think he's like doing some tops, like on the karate tops maybe. Maybe if you have better answers, maybe put them in the comments. It's like he continues striking, and then this. And now we get to the part I was waiting for, yeah, this, this stuff. So, like, right here, it's like, it's inexplicable, like, oh, how, how do you get there? So I think the basic gist was, like, he's on the ground, his, Ajito still has his arm here. And, like, Ajito still has it, like, in this way, right here. It's, like, still between his armpit, but all Lutian must have done is he just moved uh, to Ajito's side. And then picked him up by the leg, and his legs are over there. This, this is this like little beam right here is just there to like illustrate. Oh yeah, he moved. He's like water and stuff. Ooh, water cut off. He went limp. But all he did was like he just moved, he moved up. He, he like picked up uh, Ajito's like knee joint, armpit with like his uh, arm joints, and he just simply moved them while like lifting his legs. Like that's that's how that's how Ajito got thrown right here. And he just continues stomping on him. And also, I forgot to mention, uh, Leo, yeah, right here. Like, uh, Adito does a kick, right? And his other leg is just free game. It's like, he got one of his arms there, and then a trip. That, that's how he fell. Without, with just this, I, I don't think it would be enough, but he did a... You see here, he did a leg trip, right? So, like, that's all of, like, the formless arsenal that these two people exhibit. Another, uh, moment I would like to take note of is, uh... This uh, interaction, like when Ajito completely adapted to Galang right here, so uh, he does a punch. He, he dodges, as I said before. And here is something interesting I like to point out. He puts his leg right this, and this grabs his uh, arm. So it's like two moves to like toss him off balance. In all honesty, it's it's, pro it's very similar to Hatsumi Star Drop almost, except like it's a grab here, but this motion right here it's similar. Also another thing, like right here. Galang doesn't jump to the side because you see he's all, he's already on the ground, and what, what he, basically what he did here, since you see these most and these most in lines, he just rolled from here, just rolled around Ajito's kick right here, and like right now he's like getting his posture back and while rising from this position, you see this, he's going up, he he, he starts doing another barrage punches more that flash combination, Ajito's still dodging and dodging and then uh, he grabs one of his uh, punches and then throws him off balance again, just like a twist right there. And then another punch. And like, he retaliates again, Galang retaliates. Uh, he throws another punch, and then, you know, he, he, he curbs. He curbs everything. And he curbs his other punch again. And it's like, very dire position for Galang. Another elbow, like... Honestly, like, what the hell is this? But yeah, there's an elbow. And then another foot sweep into a punch, but nah. Galang, like, completely retreats. This is, again, is like... This is, like, what we saw in the latest chapters. This is probably where the formless, like... The pattern stuff that Daromion was forced to draw, this is probably where it came from. Although I do not know what Sandrovitz has said about the topic, there is a distinction between Formless and Ajito's ability to evolve. Kano Ajito's evolution was most prominent in his fight against Galang, where he came up with a custom-made martial art to completely shut out Galang's boxing. It was also a feature that he utilized against Okubo Naoya after witnessing the full breadth of his MMA skills. This evolution is what we initially thought Formless was, but the true definition given for it is a far cry from getting the shit kicked out of you so hard you're forced to create a new martial art. There's one reason for this shift in continuity. The author was still trying to ground its own characters. Writing a coherent series is very hard, and it is a challenge for many writers, Sandrovitz included. He envisioned Ajito as a character who utilized pancreation, a very old Greek martial art. Ajito was supposed to represent ancient martial arts, whereas Okubo Naoya represents the current times. But this idea never grew into fruition, and Ajito became a lot different. This frustration can also be the reason why Sandrovitz completely changed Ajito's style of combat in the third round. Besides needing a way for Ajito to overcome Hatsumi, 
Sandrovitz committed to the idea of a fighter with two distinct personalities who utilizes two different styles. The fruits of his labor are most prominent in King and Omega. Although Ajito still has the ability to evolve and make up styles on the fly, that is something unique only to Ajito and not distinctive of the formula style as a whole. Now onto the weaknesses. Because the formula style has a large arsenal of movements, practitioners of formula spend more time picking and choosing rather than reacting to their opponent. This is very fatal against people who have faster reflexes or against specialists who only prioritize in a few moves. Fighters like Gao Lang who only focus on striking and people like Tsuroda who only focus on a single move will easily exploit this weakness. This delay can even give opportunities to surprise fighters like Mutaba and Ryuki who can take formless practitioners off guard with their transition between techniques. Although the unpredictable movements of the formless style can bypass foresight altogether, pre-initiative is a whole separate can of worms. Pre-initiative is the ability to sense the intent of an, of an opponent before they even make a single move. Naturally, this would directly counter the surprise of the formless style but because Formless intentionally hides the intent of its users, it should completely overwhelm those with pre-initiative. Right? Wrong. Formlessness doesn't completely neutralize pre-initiative, it only delays it. This was best witnessed in the fight between Kuroki Gensa and Kano Ajito. Even after surpassing Kuroki in the initial exchange, Ajito was forced to use the Formless style because Kuroki was capable of sensing Ajito's intent, despite Ajito's own pre-initiative and advantage. While using Formless, Ajito regained his previous advantage, continuing to hail Kuroki with blows. Since Ajito's movements became trickier, Kuroki was forced on the defense. Yet, he was still able to find an opening by sensing Ajito's intent. This interaction proves that pre-initiative is still effective against the Formless style. Now that we have a full view of the strengths and weaknesses of the Formless style, let's discuss the difference between Ajito's and Lutian's Formlessness. In the 6th round of the Kengen vs Purgatory tournament, it is clear that Lu Tian surpassed Kano Ajito as far as the formula style was concerned. Why? The extra training with Tokido Nico didn't add anything new to the formula style besides a power-up that most people are incapable of using. So the only plausible explanation for Lu Tian being superior to Ajito is because he is more streamlined. To put it simply, Lutian is not only more unpredictable than Kano Ajito, but he uses a smaller amount of techniques to decrease his delay. Most of the techniques we have seen him use have been limited to strikes, usually in the form of elbows, punches, kicks, and even some chops. The only technique he has that disrupts balance is a foot sweep, and he doesn't intentionally utilize any holds, locks, or throws, whereas Ajito still does. Although Lutian's delay still exists, it is far less of a window of opportunity than Ajito's. This is the difference between the two. Although the gap doesn't seem like much on the surface, it makes a big difference against high class opponents. The formula style is a form of martial arts that utilizes unnatural movements and a large arsenal of attack to surprise opponents and adapt to them. Of all the fake martial arts in Kengen Asura, the formless is the most brutal of the bunts. Unlike the Nico style, the predecessor that emphasized survival above all else, the formless style was created to give its practitioners the best chance of winning by recklessly abandoning their sanity. It is not as mischievous as the Koye style or as cowardly as the Gao style or for that matter as steadfast as the Kaiwan style. It is simply the most ruthless of the bunch. Hi. It's the cyborg whale named after Italian cheese and a dessert item. Thank you for watching. This video was made not only to prepare ourselves for my lutein analysis, but also as a buffer because unfortunately, I have some exams. So for the next two or three weeks, I won't be able to upload anything. So expect a delay on the lutein video. However, if you are somewhat intrigued by my other content, please consider subscribing. But until then, have a wonderful day.